Welcome. Today's video is the first in our series about tackling email. First up is Gmail. We're going to talk about your inbox. Maybe you're one of those people who has 200, 500, 1000 plus emails in your email inbox. And you just know that most of it is junk. But how do you possibly go through all the emails? It would take forever. In today's video, we're going to talk about tips to help you sort through your Gmail inbox and tips to help you proactively control what comes into your inbox in the first place. Stay tuned. First, when it comes to seeing email in your Gmail, know that there's a couple of ways that you can see your inbox. If you go over to settings under inbox types, there's multiple options here. The default is actually going to decide for you what goes in what email. There's your primary inbox, your social and promotions. Um, Gmail basically guesses at this, so this isn't necessarily going to be accurate. And for that reason, I don't use it. You can customize what these tabs are by going over here to the customize button under default. You can see for the most part, primary is going to be person to person emails and examples of things that aren't categorized other places. So CVS extra care is promotions stuff. And that would just be something I need to label as promotions. That way it doesn't end up in the primary inbox. Social promotions, you can have updates here if you wanted to. This is going to be receipts, bills, statements, confirmations. That can be a really helpful tab. And then forums, this is essentially lists, list serves or online groups or discussion boards. So of these tabs, figure out which ones you use. This social one, if you're not into social media stuff a lot and dating websites, this might not be super helpful for you. So you might want to uncheck it. Um, I very rarely have anything in my social tab. Like right now it's empty. I usually have a ton of stuff in my promotions tab and a ton of stuff in my primary. So for me, I don't use this view because I don't customize it. But if I did, I would remove this social tab. There's also important first. Gmail uses basically what you usually open and determines that that is important. Unread first, which is self-explanatory. Starred first, which is also self-explanatory priority inbox, which you can customize. Right now it's important and unread, but you could change it to be important and read or starred and unread, whatever combination you want. Then there's multiple inboxes. We'll talk about this in another video, but if you have multiple email addresses connected to your Gmail, it's going to show you every single inbox here. I usually default to the important first tab. After you use Gmail for a while and you customize it, this does really work well in showing you the emails that you usually just open as opposed to all the junk that you don't usually open. So I'm going to keep it here, but play around with this and decide what works best for you. So let's say that you are ready to start attacking these emails in your inbox and you need to get from your 141 unread emails and you want to get that into a more reasonable number. I'm going to show you a way to do this pretty quickly, and it's through creating filters and using labels. Over here on the left hand side, you can see examples of a couple of labels that I already have, but I want to create some new ones for these emails. So looking at things that I get pretty recently, Redfin, I get a lot of status updates because I'm looking into housing right now. So I get a lot of these status updates, but I don't necessarily need them to be cluttering up my inbox. So let me create a filter to stop these items from landing in my inbox. So to do that, I'll go over here to more and on the bottom, I'll click create new label. There's a couple of ways that you can do this. First, we're going to label our uh, filter. I'm going to just call it Redfin. You can nest this underneath another label. I'm going to actually nest it under the promotions label. That means it's going to be promotions slash Redfin. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So we'll hit create. And then that has now created our label, which is over here on the left. If you click on the three dots that are next to it and their label color, you can select a different color if you want to. You don't necessarily have to, but sometimes it's nice to have a visual representation of a label as well. And I'll show you what that looks like too. So now that we have our label, we can go ahead and create a filter. So click on one of the emails from Redfin. And at the top, click on the three dots and select filter messages like these. So it's going to automatically pull in the from part of that email of that email that I just selected. If you have specific 
subject lines that are always the same, you can add that here. If there are certain words that are always in the email that you want to add, maybe status change versus price drop versus maybe a specific zip code, you can add that here. Um, but I'm, for now, I just want emails that come from this email address to do this specific thing that I'm going to create in the filter. So it pulls in any emails that are from this email address, which is what you're going to see in the background right here. And we're going to click create filter. So I need to tell it what I want to happen when I get an email from this email address. First and foremost, I do not want it to go into my inbox. That's the whole purpose of filtering. I don't want it to land in my inbox. It's not something that I need to see in my inbox. So I'm actually going to have it skip the inbox altogether and archive it. But maybe I still want to read it. I just don't want it in my inbox. I want to read it on my time when I want to. So I'm going to mark it as read. You can mark it as unread if you want to. In this case, with this particular email address, I get a couple of emails a day. So I wouldn't want the counter on this label to say that I have you know, 70 unread emails. That would just be another inbox that I'm worried about. So I always mark it as unread just so I don't have to worry about how many I haven't read. Then I would apply the label that we just created, which as I mentioned before is promotions slash Redfin. And since I nested it underneath promotions, it's got that slash. You can also forward it. You could never test set it to spam. You could do all kinds of things with it if you want to. The important piece is this last one. Also apply filter to matching conversations. What this is going to do is this is going to pull in any emails that match this particular filter right now. So it's not just going to filter the one email address that I clicked on to start this filter. It's going to filter every single email that's currently in my inbox. So let's see what that looks like. Last thing to do is click on create filter. And then once you've created that filter, you can see a message saying that the filter was created and all of those Redfin emails are now gone out of my email inbox. And my total unread has now dropped to 91. So that's one way to very quickly go through and process some of the newsletters that you get in your email to take a really high and daunting email inbox to a very low and manageable one. So just go in and create those filters and repeat that process. You can decide if you wanna have labels for everything. Having a label and changing the label color can be helpful, but it's not necessary. Um, it, you're not gonna see the label color when you're actually in the label on the side where you're going to see it is when you're looking at all of your mail you're going to see it here so this is where i mentioned that the color coding so the color coding might be something that you want to look into if you find that the color would help to bring your attention to something specific another great way to very quickly minimize the number of emails that you're getting in your inbox is to just unsubscribe from emails be honest with yourself about things that you read or don't read and decide if you want to unsubscribe from stuff Maybe for the Harbor Freight tools, the coupons here, maybe I don't really read those or I'd rather just go to the website and I don't need to get these emails. You can click on actual email and unsubscribe in two ways. First is pretty standard. You can unsubscribe by scrolling all the way to the bottom of the email. And there's usually, in this instance, the email got clipped because it's so big, but there's usually an unsubscribe link on the bottom and you can unsubscribe in this instance to the space to unsubscribe is here. So that's a little bit at work. It usually takes you to a third party site. There's also a way to do it directly in Gmail that they have built in, which I like. Now this doesn't work with every single email that you're gonna get, but it does work with a lot of them. It can tell that this is a newsletter. And so it actually just puts the unsubscribe button right next to the email. So if you hit unsubscribe, it'll automatically pop up this box that allows you to confirm that you wanna unsubscribe from Harbor Freight Tools. In this case, I actually don't wanna unsubscribe, so I'm gonna clear that. One other super fast way to very quickly gather up all of your newsletters and get them from landing in your inbox is to create a filter that would specifically catch newsletters. One way you can do this is to click on that same email and we'll create a filter, but instead of having it be from a particular email address, we're gonna filter anything that has the word unsubscribe in it. So if we create this filter and anything that has the word unsubscribe, it's going to do whatever we, you know, whatever boxes we check here. Um, be really careful with using this one because 
first it'll show you some examples of emails that have the word unsubscribe in it in the background but some of the stuff you might actually want to land in your main inbox so updates from your doctor or um, you know notifications of deliveries things like that that you might not actually want to unsubscribe from those things would all get forwarded and all get captured in with the same newsletters that you might actually want to unsubscribe from. So just make sure you're really careful if you use that particular one. Like I said, it can be super powerful because anything that has the word unsubscribe in it is probably a newsletter anyways. So that can help you really quickly go through a bunch of your emails and clean those out. If your emails are anything past, you know, a thousand or even 500, you're probably not going to read those old emails. I mean, you, it's not worth it to look through an email from, you know, last January. Just archive it or delete it. It's not gone forever if you've archived it. If you go under more and click on all mail, all of your mail is still going to be here. All 20,000 of my Gmail emails are still here from the very first email I ever sent way back in 2010. So the emails aren't gone. So try to just archive things as much as possible. It's something you can still look into if you need to. You can still use this really powerful search tool at the top to search through anything for your email, subject line, to, from, keywords, anything like that. So don't be concerned about losing an email. It's always gonna be in this all mail folder. And if you start to run out of space on the bottom here, you can see how much space you've used. This is actually all across Google. It includes Google Photos, Google Docs, and I've paid extra to get more gigabytes. You just use Google Drive to get more. But in most cases for emails, unless you have a bunch of attachments, it's gonna take a long time to get to the, I think you get 50 gigabytes for free, but it's gonna take you a long time to build up to that. So don't be too concerned about meeting this, this limit or having too many emails in your inbox, you'll be okay. So that's one way that you can use filters to very quickly clean up your email inbox and otherwise take a really daunting inbox that's overwhelming and overflowing into something that's a lot more manageable. And again, remember my tip about checking it. So you wanna make sure you check it as infrequently as possible. If you get a couple of emails a day, maybe once or twice a day is gonna be fine. If you get a lot more than that, then maybe check it more frequently. But you can't keep your inbox under control if you ignore it. So make sure that you're giving it attention and continue to go back to it. Well, if you found this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. In the next video, we're going to talk about what to do with your email now that you have all of these emails that you actually need to do something about. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you don't miss the next video.